they got to hear the whole thing, right? No questions? Yeah, they asked me to postpone it. All right, so um, if there's no questions, I guess we'll go into this. You mentioned in the beginning Christ Center is specific. The energy flows out of that about four million times the speed of light. Flows what? So the energy flows out of the Christ Center like four million times the speed of yeah, light. Yeah, four million times the speed of light. And he said if that can be harnessed, he mentioned some things that could be possible with harnessing that energy. And I was wondering, like, is how would that be possible to harness the energy coming out of a psychic center? He said it would be what now? Like if you could harness the energy coming out of that just that center alone, uh, you'd have enough power to go to Venus and back. Or well, he wasn't just talking about that center. He was talking about the Kundalini. Oh, was he referring to Kundalini itself? Yeah. He said if you can harness the power of Kundalini, you can you can destroy a mountain, mm -hmm. or you can move a, 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 a ship like the United States. Yeah. You know, back and forth, back and forth, and that's the power that lies within the uh, uh, this three and a half knot that everybody talks about, yeah. and that's why it's not that easy to do. <laughs> that's why it's not that easy to unravel or mm -hmm. to or to actually contact and manipulate and control. So, so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, comic. Uh, uh, preparation that's needed before tapping into that power. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what he was. That's
that's what he's referring to. But he wasn't giving like an actual. He was just giving like a, a metaphor. He was not actually saying you can harness it to do this, but it would be like. Yeah, I mean, if you can imagine uh, uh, the yogi adept who have tucked the kundalini all the way up to at least the throat center, uh, that that yogi adept could break the ring pass knot of this earth, mm -hmm. right? Meaning that he can he can bring about a level of projection that will allow him to exit the earth in his etheric body and travel without without a vehicle of, 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 of without an external vehicle to travel to another world. Mm -hmm. So uh, now think about what man is trying to do with the uh, space shuttle. With the space shuttle mm -hmm. and how much energy they have to use just to get outside of the uh, uh, the Earth's gravitational pull, right? And it's tremendous planning, tremendous years of, uh, of calculation and all this energy. But here, an adept who can tap into that power, he can bring about that, you know, that projection and, and exit the Earth and go to Mars, Venus, wherever, you know. As long as he has permission to enter, he can go. So, so that's, I mean, just think about it like that. Compare the fuel. I mean, look at the Mars mission they've been planning since the 80s. They've been talking about going to Mars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they set a date in 2020-something. Uh, you, know, um, you know, now they're talking about they're going to go ahead and do it. So, so and the people who's going to volunteer, they have to be prepared to live there on Mars for the rest of their life. Because they really don't have a plan to come back. They're talking like so, they're talking about the story though. So, they're talking about they're going to be there about two years and they come back. You know, nah, they, they, they told what now they saying that they they saying that isn't, if people are not going to come back, they're going to have to live there. So, so, so it's just a tremendous energy, you know, that, that it would take to to move outside the gravitational pull, and never nevertheless to travel, you know, across millions of uh, of miles, millions of miles, tens of millions of miles, you know, to these other planets. But the etheric body, uh, uh, with the sufficient power of the uh, of Kundalini, can get you there within seconds or minutes, where it would take months. Mm -hmm. for a physical vehicle to move. So the power is tremendous. It's a, it's, it's, it's a tremendous power. You know, that's why you're not going to be raising kind of lean over the weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. these, these people who tell you to go and uh, come this weekend thing and raise kind of lean over the weekend, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen. You know, so it's, it's a joke. I put this together some years ago using different... Uh, references from uh, from the Serpent Power book and from and from uh, Sivananda's Kundalini book. This chart right here that lists all the uh, it lists 20 different uh, things about the chakras or the psychic centers. It, it lists 20 different forces Energies and forces within that, within that, within those centers. More than twenty, but it's twenty different categories for each chakra, and it just shows you the the tremendous level of, of not. And this is, and, and this is not everything. This is just a, you know, this just give you a brief because because uh, because you can write much more. Uh, I could have went on and did a couple of more tables on this, right? But just to make it simple and to give you just a snapshot of the of the vortex of power, because each chakra or each psychic center is a vortex center. It's a vortex center of power.
okay? So, so just to just to give you just to give you that, I want I want you to look at this. And of course, the first is the it shows you it tells you the names of the chakras. Um, the first chakra, second chakra, third chakra, so you can have some brief understanding. It tells you it tells you about how many petals that chakra has. The petals are actually are actually um, uh, well. The petals are several things. The petals are are what they call uh, seed uh, seed masses. And what it is is actually where the knotties enter the chakra, enter the chakra, and and exit the chakra. And a petal is there, right, which helps to create what is called the knotty knots, right. And we're told that that uh, those petals are actually sound vibrations. They are the original samskaras of the soul, which, which is, uh, you know, which is a, 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 a seeded power, in other words. What is samskaras? Anyone? Impressions, right? And those impressions have particular power that you can pull on, right? Now, of course, in the in the in the physical world, we have impressions of of uh, of our past events. And what do we do? We recall those past events and we gain some type of uh, uh, mental or emotional power from those past events. If you, if you had a particular song or, or, or rhythm that, that if you played it, it would take you back, you know, to a particular time where you felt safe, strong, or in love. That sound vibration left a samskara within your aura and by you playing that particular sound then you can call on that particular power and that's all what it is that's what mantra is as a matter of fact so 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 when we chant mantra we chant mantra in order to activate that original samskara so we can call on the power that the soul left behind for us to call them. And, and that's the, you know, that's the great power of mantra. The power of mantra is guaranteed. So it's just, it's, so, so that's what the petals are in the chakras or the psychic centers, all right? Now, in the, 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 third, the third one, it gives you the, the BJs, which are the chakra petals again, and it gives you the Sanskrit uh, letters for those petals, okay? Va, sa, sa, sa is the first one. And there's several uh, variations to say this. And it is, it is from these letters or sound vibrations or sonic vibrations that they actually put together the, uh, the mantras from, okay? When the yogi adept or master go into meditation, he can take these sound vibrations and, play, and, and create a word or a sentence that he can pull power from. The original power left by the soul. Okay. Then each mantra has a, uh, I mean, each chakra has a mantra assigned to that chakra. Okay. It has like a major BJ. All right. 
and 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 that is on four, where we give the main mantra for each chakra. All right. Number five. Now also the mantra for each chakra. Now the Hindus or some of the Buddhists they will say, well, that's actually a, a entity, right? That mantra is a is is a presiding deity, right? So I mean, that's their way of uh, of actually describing the force that's there. Uh, but in actuality, it's a power. Of course, with any power or element or whatever, you have a diva. Okay, but it's actually a power in uh, in planet or inserted within your auric field. It's a key to unlocking that power, to using that power, and controlling that power. Then on the fifth one, you have the um, you have the the names of the rims of existence, the major rims of existence. And you have a, there's really no English translation for these things. But I mean, we attack some type of English one word to it, but there's really no English translation to it. But each, each chakra is a realm of existence. So, and each chakra exists uh, partially or wholly on, on every realm of existence, too. Okay, so understand that. So there's a, there's a portion of each one of the major chakras on this physical realm. And on every realm of existence, you just have one particular realm I mean, one particular chakra that may dominate a particular realm, all right? But all the chakras exist on all the realms. Uh, the elements, or the, it's the same as the Mahabhutas, okay? You have earth for the first chakra, water for the second chakra, the sex chakra, uh, fire, for the solar plexus chakra, air for the heart chakra, uh, either for the throat chakra, mind for the Christ chakra, all right? Then you have the name of the tablets, which is also the, the Mahabhutas, or the major Mahabhutas, which you can see there. Then you have the Tavic Rays, all right? 56 for the base, 62 for the sex center, 52 for the solar plexus, 54 for the heart, 72 for the, for the throat, and 64 for the Christ. Now, all of these tablet rays add up to be 360 tablet rays that actually radiate from the sun and collected and is collected by these different chakras. And this, these are the building blocks of all material, all gross material, all subtle and gross material. These tablet rays are. Then they give you the colors of the chakras, the esoteric color and the exotoric color, okay? Then you have the... What's the difference between exo and exo? That's uh, exactly what it said. So the internal color is one and the internal. Internal and the exterior is exactly what it said. Then you have the Malala, uh, uh, or the symbol of it, of that particular chakra, and it gives it there. In advanced Tantra Yoga, that becomes very important, and Kundalini Yoga, all 
right? Then you have the residing pranas of, of, the, of, of the particular chakra. Now, of course, all the pranas are transferred through each chakra, but you have a primary prana or, or central location for the prana in each chakra too as well. All right? So, huh? I said you notice something that you, you get attention to the breath too. Yeah, so yeah. That, that you yeah. got to pay attention to that when you're when you doing the second practice. Yeah, the down breath, together breath, the up breath. All right? So, that comes in with pranayama. Then you have the sound vibration. Now the sound vibration is emitted from Kundalini. It's actually, it is, it, 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 it's actually an aspect of Kundalini. Okay. It's actually an aspect of Kundalini. And you have four aspects of sound that, that derives from the dormant state of Kundalini. And it comes up and it actually activates the, uh, the chakras and lock the consciousness into the body. Okay, that's the only way you are alive, walking around, is the Kundalini through, through the sound vibration rises up to the throat center and locks consciousness into the body. All right? Then you have the residing uh, deities. All right? It has all different types of symbolism. And this is, this is good for meditation. Okay? I, I don't believe in, in the orthodox interpretation of these particular uh, residing deities. Uh, I do believe in the power of these uh, residing deities and the energy, but it's, it's, it's all about interpretation and it's all about uh, using it for meditative practices. Then you have the granting knots because you had the 90 knots, and then you have the granting knots. The granting knots is, is also, uh, it's another knot that helps lock the intelligence in all the bodies. What it does, it, it locks the, the sex and the, 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 the base and the sex chakra it's a conversion point of these powers. And, lo and it locks consciousness there, then it, then it does it again between the solar plexus and the heart chakra. There's another conversion point of power where a granting knot is developed. And then there's another granting knot between the throat and the Christ chakra. Now, when the, when the, when the student begins to raise Kundalini, he not only have to unlock the, the, uh, the chakras, the 90 knots at the chakras, but he have to unlock the 90 knots, uh, the granty knots between the chakras as well. And then he becomes an adept. All right. You have the uh, three uh, gonas or gonas, which is Thamas, Rajas, and Savit, which is uh, the qualities of 
nature or forces, the, the forces within nature, which is dog, desire, and pure. Okay? Dog being Thomas, desire being Rogers, and Savik being pure. Then you have the uh, another reference here to the Devic goddess of East Chopper. Um, like I said again, where there's tremendous power, there's a diva. Okay, uh, we have water in this room. There's a diva connected to this water. Are these just the Sanskrit okay. name or is that the real name? Those are the Sanskrit names. So, so, so anywhere you have, if you have light in this room, there's a diva of light. If you have fire in this room, there's a diva of fire. If you have air in this room, there's a diva of air. Okay, so, so don't get thrown off when they start talking about diva goddesses and all of that. It's just describing a power that's present. Yeah. And these divic goddesses have an actual like image representation, physical representation. Yeah, it's, I mean it's they like Shiva. Yeah they do. They do. Um, now they lead the, the the divas live between the realms. They live more on a on a vibrational state than a than, than a realm, than, than the realms, because they live, they live between the realms, okay? So it's not like, like, like we live from realm to realm, but the divas live between the realms. They almost like the, like a cohesiveness of the realms, okay? Then you have the esoteric planets associated with the with the uh, with each chakra. Okay, and now this goes really deep. I really all of this stuff. I can spend nine weeks talking about it. I'm just giving you an oversight of it. Uh, this is a, because it really gets deep. And each each realm or each each chakra represents a particular uh, uh, power of a particular planet. Okay. Now, just a quick just so so you can kind of understand some of the mechanics of it. Uh, the the solar the the the, the sun. Uh, gives out this thing called the Tavic rays or Tavic matter. Okay? Now, the whole, every, every planet in the solar system, and there's a lot of planets in the solar system. There's, you, you know, you, you, you know we had a nine or 10 or 12 planets in the solar system, right? The, the scientists say now we have 12, we have 12. Then we have, I don't know how many moons, I think it's, it's over 100, over 100 some moons in the solar system. You know, I think it was, what, 192 or something like that. Moons inside the solar system. Mm -hmm. so, so all of these planetary bodies live within this, this tavic matter, all right, or these tavic rays. They radiate, in fact, even scientists now, they call it plasmic matter. They recognize it, okay? And, and it's some type of sonic vibration that leaves the, the, the sun. Now, these sonic vibrations are actually modified by every planet. Now, many, many years ago, thousands of years ago, the, the yogi adepts and masters realized this, and they charted it. And that's how we came up with the 360 tavic rays. And also, 
we came up with how each planet affects each chakra and how each planet, the energies, not only the tabic rays, but there's a the tabic rays are like one of the carriers of the energy. It carries, it modifies the energy and then send it off to another planet. The modified energies of all these other planets help to build and modify the, the planes of existence here on this particular planet. And, and this is where uh, the association come from. The energies that, that went from the sun to these planets and then eventually made it to Earth. And it helped to modify the, the, uh, the matter and the subtle matter and physical matter of this particular Earth. All right. Of course, we have in the Granty Knots, you have the three main, what they call the Maha Bindus. I don't think I have it here. I do have it. Uh, what they call the Maha, the Maha Bindus is really uh, the Granty Knots. That's how the conversion of the Granty Knots came about. Uh, you had uh, the first. The first uh, Maha Bindu that affect us, of course, is Earth, the Mother Earth. And then the second Maha Bindu that affect us uh, is the Sun, the Mighty Sun. And then the third Maha Bindu that affect us is the Moon. Okay, so so you have those three Maha Bindus. They actually make up the granty knots, all right? So, but, but uh, the, energies, the energies that come from the sun to, to, uh, to, to, to this planet is modified. The energies come from the sun is modified by the earth, uh, affects the, the two lower chakras, the energies. Then we have the solar plexus chakra, heart chakra that receives energies that's not necessarily modified by the earth uh, that much come directly to us from the sun and then and then the upper uh, chakras uh, the the uh, throat and Christ uh, chakra those energies are modified by the moon all right which if you see Grantinas, Rucha, Vishnu and Brahma that's what that means. All right. So basically, that's it. Now, the um, the Kundalini, the last one is Kundalini. This, the these names, these Sanskrit names, uh, show the it's a it's a Kundalini power or force that radiates through the body. And as it enters the, the, uh, these particular realms or levels, uh, it takes on those particular names. So if you ever studying uh, the, the Tantra of Kundalini Yoga and you see those names, you know that it's associated with Kundalini. All right? So, so Kundalini rising to the Crown center is referred to as nirvana. That's what is meant by nirvana. To the to the crown center, yeah. That's the power that's radiated. That's the name of the power that's radiated. When the kundalini moves, it takes on another name. The same way Prana do. The same way Shati do. You see how Shati, as Shati graduates and moves, it takes on a different name. Mm -hmm. All right. So so kundalini does the same thing. Now this is just to give you a different perspective of what you just seen and to so you'll kind of clearly understand it. What I just told you, you can follow it a little bit better here. All right. Is there any questions? Is Shuga the only 
channel capable of handling the full power from the moon? The Shuna is the only one that we know about. But there's three levels to Shushuna. Right. But, uh, so, I mean, we say Shushuna, but there's within Shushuna, I think there's, there's, there's three channels within Shushuna. But, uh, but that's the, you know, that's the only place that we know of right now in our level. That's a sacred, what they call the Brahmanadi, mm -hmm. all right? That this power can flow in full consciousness. So raising Kundalini, any other Nadi would just be a partial raise at the at best. Yeah. You said the petals are for example, the Hindi first chakra is a square with four petals, and the, the nadi knots are connected to those four petals. The nadi knots pass through yes, uh, that chakra, creating the thing called the petal, or the seed mantra, or this, or these, or the original sanskara. Bija um, is is the sound, is the name. Yeah, and it's the it's 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 the petal itself, but it's a Sanskrit name for the petal. There's a second part of this class, which is next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you got time to look at this and go back and listen to the tape as well. The tape was Kundalini? No, the psychic center. Psychic center? Yeah. The significance, the significance of the time. Hey, you got the second symbol on cassette? I don't know. What about this? I have to look. I think I got it on the Look, check it out for me. When we we'll meet again for for uh, twelve blessing, mm -hmm. when that gonna be? Wednesday. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If I got it, I get it down to you. I think you have it too. No, I may have, but I I have to. It's hard for me to move around. Okay, I I'll bring it to you. Okay. So. I can listen to it before we come to class. So next week, um, like I said, there's a second part to this tape. You can go back and study this. I know it's a lot to take in at one time. But um, if you study it a little bit, you'll, you'll understand what he's talking about, what Dr. King's talking about. So there's no other questions? In performing uh, magic like healing, we're sending out energy or we're sending out our own energy and we kind of have that, that dissipating feeling. Couldn't we use that energy from Kundalini to send that out? There's the only way you send it out anyway. You, you cannot blink an eye, move a, move a finger, think a thought without the power of Kundalini. Mm -hmm. all, all movement, all thought, everything in the body is Kundalini. It's, a, it's, a, it's using the power of Kundalini. Now, the technique only helps you harness and concentrate that power of Kundalini. And the greater your concentration and contemplation is, will be the greater uh, the power of Kundalini can work through you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to think about pulling down on Kundalini because if you're thinking, you're using the power of Kundalini. Now, if you're using the, if you if you're directing all your energies towards 
that healing, that's a power of Kundalini. See, in a concentrated manner. So that's why the healing technique works. It's because you're channeling all your energy towards, through, you know, towards giving to that patient. But it's a power of Kundalini. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not separate powers now. Now we give it different names in order to categorize it. All right? Mm -hmm. Just like we give Shakti power different names, but everything is Shakti. You know, whether it's, even if it's mine, it's Shakti. So you have to understand that. Mm -hmm. So, so no, I mean, the technique is a technique to help you m manipulate the power of Kundalini through, through, through prana, through, through, through spiritual healing. All right, so don't don't start thinking about raising Kundalini while trying to heal somebody. Just just concentrate on the healing. Mm -hmm. Concentrate on moving the energy through you. All right, and all everything else will be done. <coughs> all right. longer route to raise kundalini, the route of service, eventually your kundalini will rise. Um, would you be prepared to handle that rise of kundalini because you said you'll feel pain? Would you know that it will be coming and would you be prepared to take measures? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's uh, what he's talking about is a natural balance way not the dangerous way. And, uh, and a natural balance way is that you will gradually, this will gradually happen over lifetimes, okay? It will gradually happen over lifetimes. You will naturally become psychic. So when you become psychic, what does that mean? That the power of Kundalini is rising within you in a natural way, okay? So, so, so your concentration becomes becomes more uh, uh, focused. Your mind becomes more focused. All your senses become more focused. Your your auric body becomes clear, and it seems to begin to clear up. That you have clear channels through your you know you know through your nadis to move to to move the vital and mental energies through the nadis. All right. So that means that the power of kundalini that's that's operating throughout your body becomes stronger. It becomes more pronounced. Okay, so the so the kundalini begins to 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 operate on higher levels of frequency. It begins to allow you to detect the different the different mental levels on each on each chakra. Okay, so because each because each chakra is is really a a, uh, a, a it's it's really a, a brain in a sense. You know, it's a concentration of, of, of intelligence. And and you have and you have all these different levels of, of mental of mental uh, of frequencies going through there. But the higher mental frequencies we, we we are totally unaware of. It's just like we're totally unaware of all the radio waves that's coming through this room right now. But if we tune each chakra into it, we can hear the different levels of mind. We can hear the different, and we can feel the different levels of energies, and that's what we need to do with our chakras. And then, then you can tune in and you can hear uh, uh, messages from the higher realms, from the lower realms, from the past, from the future. You know, that's what, that's what Kundalini does. It synchronizes, it synchronizes each chakra to allow you to pick up all the mental the, the, the mental waves of, uh, of, of, of energy frequencies and the vital waves of, of, of uh, energy frequency, okay? That's what it does, all right? So, so of course, if you move into this in a natural way, you become more, you become stronger and you become balanced. And, and one of the reasons why the yogis talk about a more natural way of doing this is because of all the distortion that we have to get rid of. 
and all the the uh, the the uh, the cleansing, in a sense, and control of our emotions, we have to take control of. You know, we have to be able not to suppress, but to control and to transmute our lower nature. Okay, and I mean that's our biggest challenge. That's our biggest challenge, you know, because because right now, uh, most of the population, if 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 a booty shaking type uh, video or performer come around, people people show up and they just give their their full attention to it, right, right, which makes absolutely no sense, you know, <laughs> but they do it. I mean, they do it. You know, they do it, and and uh, that just shows you the level of consciousness we're on. You know, if 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 if, uh, if if Beyonce was showing up at this college, there would be no parking spaces out there. Absolutely no parking spaces, just because she's going to shake her butt. You know, and it has no value to anyone really, but maybe to give you a little. Uh, a sensation for a few minutes and then it disappears into nothingness. You know? <laughs> and and where have you went because of that? You know. So so but but that's the difference. Now if you if you if your if, if if you had your 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 chakras develop and you could tap into that great mental energy, then the fact that Beyonce is going to be here will not drive you to do anything. It will not motivate you whatsoever. But maybe to send her some, some energy, some prayer energy, some healing, you know, and everybody that's going there with her. You know, but that's the, you know, you have to be able to, 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 to detach from those lower desires. So of course, you'll be prepared. Karma will prepare you over time. Karma is actions. All your actions towards developing yourself in a natural way, it will prepare you for that for that rise of Kundalini. All right? So it will prepare you. I've heard electric tape before, but there's one part he mentioned I didn't hear before or didn't recognize. What's that? He was talking about, I forgot which century he said he raised Kundalini, he raised Kundalini too, but the, so the blood flows to the brain and, mm -hmm. and it exerts pressure on the capillaries. Mm -hmm. So it's just dropping your head, like pounding at that point. Mm -hmm. but, um, so then why does that, why does that happen? Why is all the blood forced upward to the brain? It's what is blood in the body? It's energy, concentrated energy. It's concentrated energy. And again, and what and what are the put methods? Put it on the low body. Yeah. What are the methods? What are the methods of yoga do? Restrict the flow of energy. It restricts the flow of energy, and it does what to the flow of energy? It pushes it up. It pushes it up. So when you do like uh, you do intense uh, or lesser <coughs> practices, it's what happens sometimes to your head, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's why. That's why. That's why he was saying the capillaries would, would expand and be taller, taller. Yeah, and you can. And you can. Uh, it's dangerous when you're doing this stuff by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous. So, so that's why you need a guy. That's why he mentioned in that. He mentioned in that a couple of times that to always when you're doing it like that to do it, do it under, under the presence of a, another master no. or, or a guy, somebody yeah. that's watching over you while you're doing it. Yeah, someone has a knowledgeable person over you to do it. Because well, it's, it's, because it's dangerous. So is the OJAS forced up to the brain as well? That's where the OJAS belong. The OJAS don't belong in your sex center. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a product of the brain. So, so we brought it down because of our lung disease. Yeah. So, so you push the OJAS up to the brain, and it gives the brain, it balances the brain off 
to prepare the brain for the greater power. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I mean, this is uh, is is uh, is something when your heart stops beating. Mm -hmm. Fear, and you can't help but the fear come in. The fear comes in. And if you're not preparing for it, <laughs> you know, it can knock you off. And the agonizing pain is just there. There's nothing you can do about it. But deal with it. So, so you know, so you have to prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself. Is, is the aura spinning at that point, or is it also being constricted to the higher? It's, everything's pushing upwards. And, uh, and uh, it's just, it's just the thin layer of protection is there. And everything is pushing up. You're bringing about conscious death. I mean, so, so I mean, that's why, you know, you're taking the energy and you're restricting it and you're trying to take it and open because you need all that energy to open, to open each chakra. You cannot unlock the chakra. You know, if you're trying to open the chakra, you're trying to bring a, if you're trying to open the chakras, you need a full rise of Kundalini. You just can't open the chakras the way people say to you. You know, you can open the chakras. All these mm -hmm. so-called techniques and mudras to open the chakras, it's just a bunch of crap, okay? You open the chakras by, you fully open the chakras by bringing up the power of Kundalini. And you take the power of Kundalini and you open the chakras. That's how you open a chakra. Mm -hmm. now, you can activate a chakra, you know, but to fully open and activate a chakra, you need the full power of the Kundalini. All right. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, you know, right? It's not, it's not an accident thing. No, you know it. I mean, it. You, you can have spontaneous, a, a, a spontaneous rise of Kundalini. You can have that. That can happen. But even at that point, you have to take control of something. Spontaneous full rise. You can have a spontaneous rise of Kundalini. <laughs> but even at that point, you have to take control of it. Or you hurt yourself, or you die. You know? So, so I mean, but, I mean, you can, you know, you can have it. It happens. And when you hurt yourself, you know, it used to take uh, several lives to get over. Sometimes, sometimes it takes several lifetimes. So, but, so it's dangerous. It's dangerous to do it. So that's why you need someone there to guide you to do it. So in those depictions of like the Master Jesus where he has like this kind of golden disc around his head, mm -hmm. is that what someone's aura would look like would raise from the full race to their Christ center? Not just... necessarily, no. This is an honest thing. Although although I mean you you uh, I have seen people who know nothing about Kundalini with that thing around their head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just a it's just a spiritual state that some people be in. You know, I met some uh, some Christians uh, that know nothing about that, and they have some of the most beautiful auras that you want to lay your eyes on. It's because they live the way they live their life, the way you know the the, the devotion they give to God and, and to Jesus. I mean, so you no, know, they have. They, I mean. You would think that they that they some they are advanced, you know, but you would think that they might be more advanced than what they are. Mm -hmm. So that's not that's just someone's depiction. But um, the uh, a great master, you'll see his aura, or you won't see his aura. It depends, it depends on whether he wants you to see his aura. He absorb the aura into himself. Yeah, or or the aura might be at such a level that you can't see it. Seeing that too, some people are so it's on such a higher frequency, especially when they in operation or doing something that you cannot see it. And you see, and some and uh, some some of the uh, some of the some of the older staff members of the Tear Society, I was shocked by the display of their aura when they got into the uh, into some of the practices. Had. They had powerful auras, tremendous power, mm. you know. So, but yet, uh, they wasn't that advanced. 
but they were advanced when they were doing what they were doing because they had been doing it for 20, 30 years. They had, they had perfected a particular technique that made them, that made them incredible, um, to seem incredible and look incredible. So, but you have to know what the auras are. You have to understand what all that means. Is there any other questions? Did you say yeah. Jesus' aura is like the size of FIU? Mm, not, really? necessarily, not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, sorry. Jesus was a cosmic master, so so I'm sure he took his aura and um, he absorbed his aura within him. That's what he was a cosmic being. Yeah. So 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 he had no aura like us, you know, when they get to that level, at the Christ level, they absorb the aura within them and they use, they use every energy within the confined laws of karma. They don't waste a drop of energy. That's why whatever they do will be precise. Because when he, when he when took his aura to the, when he took his Kundalini to the, to the, to the Christ center, he, he was a, he was considered an avatar at that point. So at that point, they are they are a devotee in a sense, where they, you know, they work within the confined laws of karma, and they do nothing outside of the laws of karma. So that's one reason why they pull pull all the energy of the aura into into themselves, and they and they dictate. They predetermine all their actions. They dictate everything they do. You know, so they don't waste any energy. And that's the difference between regular man <laughs> and a godlike man. Alright? So it's not that they got this big aura. I know a lot of people say that in a lot of different books, and that that's, that's a bunch of crap. <laughs> you know, although you have some people with huge auras, they just haven't learned to, to, to pull that power back within themselves. That's just like a, a very, uh, um, I, I read in some book that the, the more advanced a person becomes, the aura grow real big, but in that book it also said when, when, when they become uh, uh, a sinner master, or when they raise, raise up big enough to, to lead the world, they learn how to shrink the over yeah, down in and put it in. Yeah, they cut, they they bring it back within themselves. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's close out if there's no other questions.